America is based on the idea that every citizen is guaranteed the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That each citizen has the right to defend themselves, their families, and their loved ones. For 245 years, America has led the way, guaranteeing that each of us, all of us, you and me, we have the fundamental human principle to fight with every beat of our heart and every breath in our being to live. Now, I'm not an attorney or a judge or a police officer. I'm a survivor, as most of you know. I am a victor who faced down his monster. I defeated my giant, the one who kidnapped me as a child. Because of that experience, I have the faintest glimmer of understanding Kyle Rittenhouse, specifically when it involves him transforming from a boy into a man in the blink of an eye. He was hounded by a growing mob of rioters who are hell-bent on doing him harm attacked by three men who, in my opinion, and by all outward appearances, wanted to end his life. He survived, but it came at a price. It cost him his youth, his innocence, and his peace of mind. And to top it all off, he had to endure a trial where his life was once again in the hands of strangers. Now that, my friends, to me, is tragic. But the question that many people are asking, we have lawyers who are talking about the law and motive and former judges who are talking about case precedents, and we have the media with their agenda. To me, it boils down to the core of who we are as a country. It isn't a question of innocence or guilt. It's not about Kyle Rittenhouse as a boy at the time. It's about every boy and girl, about every man and woman, about every mother and father. This isn't Kyle Rittenhouse's trial. This is America's trial. And what happens after that will determine whether we are experiencing a nightmare or living the American dream where all men are created equal and have the freedom to fight with every inch of their soul and with every ounce of their being. This is America's trial, which will determine, does the mob rule, do political activists reign supreme, or does justice truly prevail for everyone and not just a few? Now, let's begin. Hello, my name is George Molo, and welcome to another episode of George the Giant Slayer. Today, you can see I'm taking a more serious tone for the sobering story I'm about to share. I want to give it its all due respect, but that doesn't mean that I don't have positive news for you. For in every dark day, there is always a pillar of goodness, a foundation of light to hold on to, to carry you from this day to the next, and this is no different, and I will get to that towards the end of the episode. But I want you to hold on to one thing. I want you to remember that part of solving a problem, any problem, is recognizing it and naming it. Doing that is winning half the battle. Now, all of you I'm sure know about Kyle Rittenhouse's story. I'm going to go over it again, except this time add in my perspective. To do that, I want to share with you what happened, take you back to last summer of 2020 to provide context, because context is paramount. Without it, we're half blind and partially deaf, and we don't know what's going on in the world around us. So in that summer of 2020, it was August, barely six months that we had been living with an invisible enemy that had made most people feel like they were trapped in their homes and isolated in their lives. We walked around as strangers in a strange land, where overnight, friends and neighbors were transformed into potential enemies. Such words as camaraderie and closeness became dirty words. And then all of a sudden, riots erupted all over the nation as the death of George Floyd rippled across the internet, pushed by every video vigilante and hashtag hero, then played across every television screen and every PC monitor 24-7 by the megaphone media mafia. And they did a good job as mobsters. They took advantage of that crisis and they pushed their agenda. Democrats in the media refusing to correct the record after labeling Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist. Liberals in the media proving they don't care about justice being fair and instead are turning this trial into a political football. Should we really be surprised that a 17-year-old Proud Boys fan believed that he had the perfect right to cross state lines and protect property? Now, the media, being the good gangsters they are, took advantage of the crisis. In my opinion, 
Their in-your-face coverage was a direct and indirect threat to the American people. They were promising the riots that they called social justice protests would continue if President Donald Trump were reelected. Now, before Kyle got to Kenosha, Wisconsin, the city had endured two nights of bloody riots due to the police shooting of a local black man named Jacob Blake. Several businesses were burned, cars demolished, people injured, and many elderly beaten. It was not a protest. It was a riot. It wasn't even a civil rights protest. This was out-and-out destruction of a city that rioters hadn't built and a community that more than likely most of them never even lived in. This was a direct assault on America herself and our Western culture. From radicals who had the fantasy to reorganize this state into the twisted tyranny of Twitter dreams. Here's some food for thought. They did more than $50 million in damage to the city. That is more than half the municipal budget of Kenosha, a town of 100,000 people. How come none of the local or state leaders did anything to defend their citizens? Was there some lesson in it for everyone? Or were they sending a message? Lay down, do as you're told, obey or pay. Was it the same message that they sent to Kyle Rittenhouse when they charged him with a crime when it was evident that it was a self-defense case? <laughs> you know, it was just politics, politics and nothing more. So now we jump to August 25th, 2020. Kyle Rittenhouse, at 17 years old, went to the city his father lived in, and he spent the day washing off graffiti from school walls. We catch him later that night at 10 p.m., where he had a med kit on his hip as he protected a building from a local businessman. There's a video where he was interviewed by Richie McGinnis, and we can see it now, and we can hear him in his own words. Here it is. Our job is to protect this business, and part of my job is to also help people. If there's somebody hurt, I'm running into harm's way. That's why I have my rifle, because I need to protect myself, obviously. But I also have my med kit. Does that sound like the man the media portrayed as this like marauding murderer who wanted to go out and cause all kinds of carnage? Of course not. He was there ready to render first aid at the moment's notice. There's a medic right here if you need help. I am an EMT. If you are injured, come to me. But we have one more video which the judge allowed in trial. It's around 1030 to 1045 where police officers thanked Kyle. Here it is. And that was officers thanking an armed Rittenhouse for protecting city businesses and offering him water. From there, we jump to the first fateful event at 11.45 p.m. in Joseph Rosenbaum. Mr. Rosenbaum, early in the day, had been released from a Milwaukee hospital for trying to harm himself. The moment he saw Kyle, he angrily started shouting at him and throwing objects. A second later, he lunged in to grab the barrel of his rifle. Kyle defended himself, shot Mr. Rosenbaum, ending his life. Within moments, we would see unfold across all televisions, Kyle being hunted down by rioters who were more like a pack of angry wolves howling and yipping and shouting, get him! That's what they were doing when Kyle suddenly stumbled and fell to the ground. At that moment, Anthony Huba took the opportunity to strike him twice in the head with a skateboard, trying to take his head clean off of his shoulders. Within seconds of Mr. Gage Grosskreutz seeing that Anthony Huber was shot and laying on the ground dead, he froze in his tracks. With a pistol in his hand, he raised his arms high, and sadly, he didn't leave him there. I wish he would have kept him there. But a few breaths later, he started lowering the weapon and pointing it towards Kyle's head. Kyle shot him in the bicep. Right after that, he started running towards the police to let them know what had happened and to get their help. But the police were so busy worrying about thinking that the shooter was still out there that they just told him, get out of the way. One officer even pepper sprayed him as he approached the patrol car window. But nonetheless, Two hours later, Kyle and his mother, who had returned to Antioch, Illinois, they went to this local police station where Kyle turned himself in and claimed responsibility for his actions. Now, I ask you again, does that sound like the actions of a murderer 
of this bloody thug, of the white supremacist racist vigilante who the media has been describing for about a year? Does that sound like Kyle and his actions? Of course not. But that's the same message they've been sending since day one of the 2020 riots. The same message that they've used as a cudgel to threaten the country. It's the same message they've used to debase and divide the American people. And it happens to be, funny enough, the same message prosecutors started sending during the trial. The same message they sent to Kyle Rittenhouse which was resistance is futile. You know what? You might just live, but most importantly, we won't come after you. When I heard the prosecutor say some of those words, let them beat you, take your beating, I was stunned. I didn't believe it. I had to play it a couple of times. So I have that clip here for you and listen in. You're going to be shocked just like I was. Everybody takes a beating sometimes, right? Sometimes you get in a a scuffle and maybe you do get hurt a little bit. That doesn't mean you get to start plugging people with your full metal jacket AR-15 rounds and no bullets are not bullets. Now, wasn't that disgusting? What's even worse is they tried to push racism to the forefront of a self-defense case. They have learned nothing. They have learned that anything made of anger and lies manifest of hate coming from a heart devoid of hope, seething with contempt is a one-way ticket, a dead-end street to oblivion. None of these people have learned that. Now, what is left for us to do are the positive actions we take to build the country that represents us, telling us who we are and who we will be, in the future. Now we've summed up the story and it's time to get to that positive news that I promised you. If Kyle Rittenhouse is found innocent, then it will finally be the proof we need to show that the foundation of America is sound, secure, and strong. That the shiny beacon on a hill, no matter how many men have tried to corrupt her, is still burning brightly for everyone to see. If, if, however, it comes out and he's found guilty, however horrendous, however disgusting, it will tell us one thing. It will certify that the cornerstone of our society, that justice is fractured. Now, that is not a reason to get down, but it is a reason to get focused. And you're going to say, why, George? Why wouldn't I get down? Why wouldn't I get angry? because it serves no purpose. It's kind of like when you walk into a dark room at night and all the lights are off. You can't see for the first couple of minutes. Do you get angry? Do you get down? No, you settle in, you let your eyes adjust, and soon you can see everything. It's the same thing in life. Sometimes you have to adjust your perspective when you're living in troubled times. You have to adjust your sight, adjust your vision, And pretty soon, you can start finding good things in any dark corner. And remember this. There is nothing we cannot accomplish as long as we do not surrender to apathy. There is no task that is impossible as long as we do not give up hope. Period. End of statement. Now we've come to that time in the video. If you enjoyed it, Please smash the like button, hit subscribe, share with your families, friends, and coworkers, and leave your thoughts in the comments down below. And remember, never bow down, never bend the knee. Firmly defiant. Stand up, stand tall, and get busy living your best life now. Always forward.